Vice President Kamala Harris is incredibly busy helping to run the country as well as run a re-election campaign <coughs> with so much at stake. And I have to say, we at this table are thrilled that she found a moment to come and see us. Please welcome back Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> Good to see all of you. It's good yeah. to see all of you, and happy New Year. It's happy great New to have you, everybody. Yeah. Well, we Finally. thank you for taking a break from you. the campaign trail and come talk to us today. And now, you. as you've been going around the country, you're talking to to people, yeah. asking questions, finding out what they're thinking. Um, so, what are what are they telling you, and what are they telling you they want from the two of you? Well. I am traveling the country. And um, let's start with the women of America. Mm -hmm. uh, what they are telling me in state after state is that they are concerned about the future of our country. Um, many of us often think about the future of our country in the context of our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they talk about their concern that if their daughter is going to college, will she go to a state? where she will have access to the health care she might need, including reproductive health. They talk about the prayer that many will speak and say as they drop their children off at school mm -hmm. because of their fear that there may be somebody with assault weapon mm -hmm. um, at some time during that school day. They talk about the concern that they have about whether their children, if they go to college, will be able to pay off their student loan debt. Mm -hmm. And they then thank our administration for some of the work we've been doing, standing for fundamental rights, like the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. The need to have reasonable gun safety laws and stand for the idea, as I do, I support the Second Amendment, but there's no reason that we have assault weapons in a civil society and we need to ban them. <laughs> they talk about the fact that our administration, because of the President Joe Biden and our administration, has tackled the issue of student loan debt and have now forgiven student loan debt for over three and a half million Americans. <laughs> And they talk about these issues in the context often of this election coming up in November and how serious mm -hmm. uh, yes. this issue is in terms of the consequences, in particular around attacks to fundamental freedoms mm -hmm. and the need to have a future where we respect the rule of law, we respect individual rights, and we try to unify the country instead of dividing the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Madam Vice President, uh, thank you for being here. Of course. The president has made saving democracy the, the center of his campaign. And many of us, I think every one of us at this table, understands yeah. the damage and the, the fear of January 6th and all that happened. Mm -hmm. But it's been three years since then, and a lot of minds are already made up. Attacks on Trump are not moving the needle. In fact, 91 indictments are not moving the needle. Um, Voters want to hear about issues affecting their lives, like the economy and the border. Should the campaign be pivoting on its messaging? So there's no doubt that one of the first issues that anyone will think of is the issue they think of when they're at their kitchen table trying to pay their bills, which is how is the economy treating them? So there's no question whatsoever that that is an important issue, which we have been in the process of addressing, and we still need to do more. I would not separate that from the issue of what is at stake in terms of hard democracy. And frankly, I think most people don't think of it in the context of democracy as much as freedom. The mm. freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body. Yeah. Um, the freedom to love who you love openly and with pride. The freedom to be able to be free from gun violence. Um, these are fundamental freedoms that are at stake right now. The freedom to have access to the ballot. 
I travel our country, and I have been in states <laughs> that have banned access to reproductive freedom, to abortion, even in the case of rape or incest. And you know, many of you know, I started my career as a prosecutor. Sonny, you and I have talked about that before. And I started my career as a prosecutor in large part, and I don't know if you do know this, uh, because when I was in high school, one of my best friends, I learned, was being assaulted by her stepfather. And so I decided I wanted to take on an issue that in particular was around prevention of and accountability for violence against women and children. The idea that in some of these states, a ban on abortion includes denying a survivor of rape or incest the ability to make a decision about what happens to their body next, it's a big, big deal. And so, but not to the exclusion of and, and not separated from the fact that we need to address the cost of living for people on a daily basis, such as what we have done to cap the cost of insulin at $35 a month. When I travel our country, especially seniors are so thankful that they no longer have to make a decision about filling their refrigerator or paying for their prescription. What we have done on student loan debt, this is, hits to the heart of so many people's pocketbooks. So both of these issues are true at the same time, and I would not separate them in terms of the connections. I think they're very real. We will not have the kind of quality of life that I think most people want um, without fundamental freedoms and the rights that are guaranteed in our Constitution and in the ideals upon which we were founded. And all of that is very much at stake. We've got a guy right now, the, the, the former president, running for office, openly saying that he promises to essentially be a dictator. Right. Mm -hmm. A person running to enter in back into the White House who is proud that he stripped Americans, women, of the right to make decisions about their own body. A person running to become the commander of ch in chief who is admitting he would weaponize the Department of Justice. Uh -huh. These issues in terms of how we are doing on a daily basis and how our democracy and our country is doing are inextricably linked. So yes, the economy is very important. We must do both. Address the economy and absolutely understand what is at stake so, in terms of fighting for our freedom. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you're going to go after the other side. Sure. Because some heavy-hitting uh, Democrats are sounding the alarm behind closed doors. Uh, President Obama reportedly has said that he thinks the Biden campaign is too complacent when it comes to Trump. Uh, Representative Jim Clyburn has said the campaign isn't breaking through the MAGA wall. Um, Michelle Obama says she's terrified, as we are, uh, about the potential outcome of the election. Now, are, are you scared, first of all, what could happen if Trump ever became, God forbid, president again? And what are you going to do to stop the crazies? I am scared as heck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I'm traveling our country. You know, there's an old saying that there are only two ways to run mm. for office, either without an opponent or scared. So on all of those points, yes, we should all be scared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as we know, and certainly this is a, a table of very powerful women, we don't run away from something when we're scared. We fight back against it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? Yeah, here we go. So, right? Yeah. Uh, so many of us know when we are scared for the future of our children, do we then stay in bed with the covers over our head? Nope. No. We can't. <laughs> we can't. We cannot. No. We cannot. No. And this is where this election it requires, rightly, that President Biden and I and, and all of us who are part of this administration, we got to earn re-election. There is no question. We got to be on the road. Listen, since the, in the last two weeks, I've been to Georgia, I've been to Nevada, I've been to North Carolina, I've been to South Carolina twice in the first two weeks of this year. I will be out on the road. We have to earn the re-elect. And we have to communicate what we have achieved. Yes. And, and that yeah. is going to be one of our big challenges. We've done a lot of good work. We need to net, let people know who brung it to them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and so we've got to do that.
and we have to do this. Madam Vice President, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, I'm glad to be with you. Off of that, uh, Donald Trump is facing 91 felony counts across four different indictments for a variety of crimes. Yet, ABC's latest poll has President Biden's approval rating at 33% behind Donald Trump's. In head-to-head -head matchups in a number of battleground states, Donald Trump edges you and President Biden out. What does it say that the party is struggling to compete with an unfit man who is very likely going to jail? There's a lot to unpack there. Wow. <laughs> this is the last part of that. So, um, let's start with this. We are in the month of January. We've got 10 months to go until the election. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, and you've seen it even just this week, um, we are all starting to narrow in on what this election will mean. And frankly, in the midst of so many big issues challenging our world that, you know, are not binary, you know, it's not just one side or the other. On this one, there's a split screen that you can throw up mm -hmm. and see. Yeah. And it's going to be the choice between what is about respecting our democracy, what is about competence versus chaos, versus someone who has called those who would attack our capital and try and undo the votes of millions of Americans in a presidential race and would dare to call those people who, can, who committed acts of violence patriots? Someone, again, who would weaponize the Department of Justice, who glorifies those people who are running countries in a way that is about themselves and not the people, mm. this is going to be the split screen. And I do believe that the American people are going to vote in favor of what is in the best interest of the future of our country, and in particular, our children. Mm. And that is about freedom, and it is about democracy, and it is about also something that I think is very basic, which is this. You know, there's a certain perversion that's being pushed by some folks that would suggest that the measure of your strength is based on who you beat down. <laughs> when what I think most Americans believe and know is that the true measure of strength is based on who you lift up. Mm. That it is... Right? It's very fundamental in that way. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. It is mm. fundamental.